Hello, and welcome to my video. I'm Olivia, and I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite artists, Artemisia Gentileschi. Artemisia Gentileschi was the first truly well-known female artist in the world. Her style is admittedly similar to the famous artist Caravaggio, whom she idolized, but her work was influenced by her own personal experiences, which gave her a different view of certain events that had long been depicted by other artists. This is a self-portrait she painted earlier in her career. It shows her painting. Artemisia was born in Rome on July 8, 1593. Her father was the famous painter Orazio Gentileschi, a prominent representative of the school of Caravaggio. The painting shown is a piece by Orazio called Saint Cecilia and an Angel. Artemisia was introduced to painting through working with her father in his shop alongside her brothers. Her brothers, however, showed less artistic promise than she did. This piece, Susanna and the Elders, is one of the earliest known pieces by Artemisia, painted in 1610 when she was 18. Unlike male artists of the time, who depicted Susanna as being unfazed by, or even as provoking, provoking harassment from the Elders, Artemisia depicts her in a victimized way that generates more sympathy for Susanna and greater resentment toward the Elders. In 1612, Orazio hired this man, Agostino Tassi, to tutor Artemisia in her painting after she was denied access to art academies based on her gender. Tassi had been working with Orazio to help decorate a palace in Rome. During their time together, Tassi raped Artemisia on multiple occasions. There was a seventh-month trial in which it was discovered that Tassi had also made plans to kill his wife, whom he had also raped in order to marry her. He also committed incest with his sister-in-law, so he was kind of really messed up. But the reason this is important to Artemisia's artwork is the way in which the experience impacted her style and her portrayal of certain events she depicted in her paintings. It was right after her experience with Tassi that Artemisia painted this piece, called Judith Beheading Holofernes. The story of Judith and Holofernes is a classic tale of female triumph, in which Holofernes, an Assyrian general about to destroy Judith's home, develops feelings for Judith and falls asleep in her presence when she beheads him to protect her home. However, Artemisia's depiction of Judith is different from others of the time. In Caravaggio's painting of the same subject, which is shown here, the situation is more romanticized. Judith is clearly the subject, but it is her look of hesitation and slight disgust that captures the attention of the viewer. Artemisia focuses on Judith's strength and confidence instead, showing her as a much more powerful figure. She also avoids the stereotype of the maidservant being an old haggish woman and paints her as a young lady actually participating in the violence. Artemisia later repainted the piece with slightly different details. She replaces the royal blue of Judith's dress with a deep golden color, which by that time had become known as Artemisia gold since she used it so much in her paintings. She also exaggerates the spraying of blood from Holofernes' neck. Here is a side-by-side -side view of the two versions by Artemisia. Not surprisingly, Artemisia's image of Judith is usually interpreted to represent Artemisia's desire for revenge against Tassi, her rapist. Shortly after the trial ended, Artemisia married Pier Antonio Stiatesi, and they moved to Florence, where she became the first woman accepted into the Academy of Design in 1616. She became quite well known, and even had a close relationship with Galileo Galilei. She was asked by Michelangelo Bonarotti the Younger, nephew of the great Michelangelo, to paint this angel called Allegory of Inclination for the ceiling of Casa Bonarotti's art gallery in honor of the great Michelangelo. As you can see, her style became a bit lighter during this time. She soon moved back to Rome and on to England to study art some more. However, most of the work that expresses her personal style was done earlier. This painting, Self-Portrait as a Martyr, is to this day one of her most widely recognized paintings. Continuing her theme of self-empowerment, Artemisia now shows herself in the position of the empowered women which she had painted, which have been suspected to be her all along due to their resemblance to other paintings of Artemisia. I think there's a reason why this painting, a simple self-portrait, rather than her darker and more distinctive paintings from earlier in life, is her most well-known. Instead of showing a commonly depicted scene with simply a different view of the event based on her individual experiences, this is a more literal image and makes a statement. It doesn't just imply that she's heroic or brave, it just comes out and says it.
So now we've seen the progression of paintings in the life of Artemisia Gentileschi and how her personal experiences influenced her art and her fame. She's still one of the most well-known female artists because she was the first to actually gain success and because her rape trial was the first successful public trial for this sort of crime and this sort of shed some light on demand for equal rights. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.